Okay, so Romero, here we are. We're bringing the glasses. We're ready to go. I just want to say, first of all, thank you for making time. You know, I know you have a super busy schedule. You were just painting. You have a little perfect little tiny smidge of orange. I know your girlfriend saw it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hope you're not embarrassed by oh, it. Oh, no, no, no. Like sometimes I have painted even my eyebrows, so. You paint your eyebrows? Or no, something? no, like, uh, like depend on the day. Oh, you end up with paint my nails, eyebrows. everything. Like, you know, I try to be as careful as possible because paint all over is not good. But I did have time in the past that I had paint everywhere. All my clothes had paint. And then one day I started saying, you know what? I don't want all my clothes to have paint. You know, and then, you know, then I don't. So, so now it's, it's more like, you know, I had painted clothes, <laughs> shoes and pants. And I mean, it's, it's, everything. it's fitting in a sense like you're an artist yeah no it's true you're in your work and and that's actually something that i want to discuss today is you know you really put yourself in your work you really put your story in your work and something that i want to really dive deep into is how the shift that you made in your career because it seems like it came from a place of having a certain degree of self-awareness being honest you know being honest with yourself about what you love and what you're passionate about and from there really putting yourself in your work putting your love in your work, and from then on, you know, you created all of this. I mean, you're surrounded yeah. by all of this representation of success, and it's really amazing. Um, I'm deeply inspired by it, and I want to sort of you. dissect your story. Um, so, yeah. No, that's great. I mean, I definitely, I'm always, uh, I, I always, I'm always very enthusiastic about sharing my story. You know, if it's going to be with one person to two people to millions of people, it's always fun to share the story. And yeah. I'm always very happy to have guests here at the palace and uh, it gives like energy. Right, Jenny? I mean, like yesterday we were doing something for a TV show and it was so much fun. It was great. I had some. I actually laugh a lot. I mean, I love painting, but I like the idea of interacting with people. So it's good. Well, I remember the first time I met you, I, I was like, oh, my God, I remember Brito, like I was. I was, I didn't know what to think, you know, I've seen you everywhere and I was like, wow, I, <laughs> I, didn't, I, know what to think. I didn't know what to think, I was, I was like, I've never met That's someone, funny. I just never met someone with that degree of success and, uh, and, and in person, you know, you see oh. it online, you see it on social media, that kind of thing, but when I met you, the first thing that I noticed about you was, you were just so easy going, it's so great to have a conversation with, I was like, oh, wow, this you. guy is really living the dream in a sense that, not the, not the success, not the material success, none of that, but you get the chance to express yourself every day and just right. be who you are, you know? So actually the first, I wanted to start off, I wanted to backtrack a little bit. I want, I want to ask you, you know, you made a shift in your career because you were going into law school. And I want to ask you, so were you born an artist? How did that shift occur? And what gave you the courage? Like once you noticed that inside, what gave you the courage to switch you know, to go in a different direction? Well, um, it was, I mean, of course, since I was a kid, I loved art, but I never knew that it was my call, you know, to be an artist. I just like, you know, like children. I see today and I saw with my son growing up, you know, you know he loved art. He still loves art now, but, you know, so I always, art was always in my life. But then I, you know, as we all grow, you know, we go through our teens and we start thinking about what we're going to do. And then in my situation, like, you know, everyone else, you know, like all of us think about, oh, my God, what we should do. And I was like, well, maybe I kind of tried to emulate, you know, my a friend of mine that he was a diplomat in Brazil from England, you know, and I was like, was wow. he older than you? Like, a Oh, yeah, my, my friends, my friend's father, you know, so it was a friend of mine. And his father was a diplomat. And then I was like, wow, I want to get that type of job because I, I dream about, you know, traveling the world, meeting people. And, and they have this beautiful home, this beautiful life. It was just like, this is the life I want for me. You know, I was like, I want to be a diplomat. I want to be a, an ambassador of Brazil. So I did everything. And I went to the army. I went to law school. And then when I, when I was in law school, I was so miserable. And, uh, and it was that moment that somehow something told in, in my heart. Or something was just telling me that I was not really happy. I was miserable, and I was like, it was a really major bold move for somebody in their early 20s to quit law school and going to college, because in Brazil, if it's really important to go to college in America, in Brazil it's even more, and it's not everybody that goes. And I had to do a really freaking tough exam to go to that college, to that university. 
And then when I was there, and I say, I, that's not what I want. Imagine, like, I was there in that major university in Brazil. <laughs> Quit. But what, My what, family freaked out. You so know I know that it's, it sounds to me like this was sort of building up, and then you finally got to that place. Yeah. But was there, like, any moment in particular that stands out to you where you just go, like, that was the last needle in the haystack, like, I'm going to do this? Is there any it was many moments. It was, not a, it was a combination of many suffering and, and you know, just in a, unhappiness so that when, when, it was building up, you know, and I think it was even from before because, you know, basically I grew up in a very, you know, kind of unusual setup. I grew up with a family that my mother was a single mother. She was the man and the woman of the house. She was really strong. And I had, you know, like many siblings and it was really a struggle. My every day was a struggle and I didn't know. The only thing I knew was that tomorrow would come, but I didn't have nothing like planned out. But, you know, and then one day I start thinking about, you know, maybe I'm going to get a job. Maybe I'm going to change my life. Maybe I'm going to become successful. Maybe I'm going to move around the world. I'm going to travel. You know, and, you know, I didn't have my father to be a source of inspiration. And then I thought maybe it would be my friend's father, a source of inspiration. I didn't even thought that way. I just thought, wow, this is like, I just got inspired by that. And later on, I realized like, that the inspiration, you know, how important it is to have people that can inspire you. And uh, especially when you are like super young, you have to have people that, that you surround yourself by, you know, great people, people with like, uh, um, with good, uh, good people, like, you know what I mean? Like people that, good intention, good, good, intention, good values, yeah, good values that can inspire you. And that's basically that, you know, I then, I then, I, you know, when I was lost, I quit and there you go. But it was many moments with many like feelings, like, and then it's almost like a dam, like keep it, a bottle, like keep it like, you keep holding it out the bottom, the bottle, and then you just, and then I was like, that was it. And I was like, you know what? And, that, and then I have a friend of mine from Brazil that I knew since I was a kid, you know, Leonardo. And Leonardo was going to university here in Miami. And then I had spent one year in Europe. And because of this family, I made so many friends in Europe. And then when I went to Europe, I stayed in people's home. I stayed one entire year. You know, it was just like from really friends really to friends and put yourself in yeah, place. and every and everywhere I went, I, I didn't make sure that I was never the you know, like when you have a guest that is a mess, you know, that you just say, oh, my God, they arrived today. I wish they leave tomorrow. Yeah. But it was the type of guest that I wanted my friends to feel like, you know what? You know, I was very helpful. And every time I had to move on, they feel like, don't go. You know, <laughs> like when I stay in Sweden for three months, my friends, parents, they say, oh, my God, you're leaving now because I. You know, I cut the grass, I washed the cars, I did everything I could do. It. I was the best guest there, and I was nice with them. And, you know, they were older, and this friend of mine was working, you know, in uh, Vienna. So they were, like, you know, at home, their parents, you know. His father was a general for the army in Sweden. Wow. So, you know, and anyway, and then I went back to Brazil and recontinued the studies, and then I realized it was, and it was, you know, and then I, it was twice that I did kind of this move, the first time, and then the second time, the second time was for, for, for good. And then I, I came to visit a friend of mine here in Miami, Leonardo, and then um, I fell in love with the city. Yeah, I am, so my, my life totally changed, and I adopt the city as a city, you know, that I live, and I, where I travel the world, and I come back, and I feel like, I feel like I'm home, so. Wow, that's, that's really, an incredible, incredible in the, in the two seconds I can tell you, but I did and so. I'm many. sure that that's it. That's in a nutshell in everything a nutshell, yeah. that has occurred now. You know, and taken you know, plays a huge role in everything that you do now today, and I'm sure that a lot of these memories, you know, you inspire you and in, in your work. And you know, I kind of wanted to tr backtrack just a little bit. And so, at the time, you didn't see. You, you mentioned how your friend's dad was a diplomat and how that gave an opportunity to travel and be very influential. So at the time, you didn't see art as an opportunity to travel and be influential, no. right? So is there any moment that maybe you saw different artists, or maybe I know that you're very inspired by Andy Warhol. Is there anything about any other artists or anything about art that all of a sudden you go, wow, I can do and have this kind of influence. I can travel the world doing something that I love. You know, it was, uh, you know, I, I mean, I always like art, but I never thought that art would be such, give, give such a change in my life as it did, you know. It was like, uh, it was like installment, like small installment, you know. It was little by little that make me believe that this could happen, you know. And also for me to believe it, even in myself, because I made many questions about myself. Oh my God, the, 
does what I'm doing really means anything? You know what I mean? Like we all do make this no, question. We always question. Do you know we stuff. question, 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 question? It was like, and then little by little, people start making me believe in myself. You know, people supporters, and it, it was just like a long journey. And it's never. And I'm, I, I still have so much work. Uh, like um, room to go, you know, so many things for me to do it because it's never enough. When you notice, you know, it's like I can be good for a million people, but there's 10 million people may not like me. Or I can be good for 100 million people, but there's still like a few hundred people that may not like me. Do you know what I mean? Or maybe they'll believe in me. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's not only me, like so many other artists in history that there's people still like it's never enough. Yeah. It's never. Well, so it seems like that uh, sort of aspect, like being that influential with your art, is something that always that had a lot of meaning for you and having an influence. And um, I think that what it is, it's something inside of you. You know, you have, you know, that you have good intentions and good values. And I think that your art serves as a means for you to express that with people. Right. And it was sort of uh, that vehicle for you to go and, and, and put your good values. And I know that a lot of your art has to do with like hope, you yeah. know, and putting that out there. And, you know, I wanted to ask you about one experience in particular. I was reading about your story online, and I know that your contribution to the Absolute Vodka's Absolute Art campaign gave right. you a, a taste of success and exposure um, early on in, in your budding career, your growing career. And it seems like ever since, you know, your success exploded, like the trajectory from then on was exponential. Um, did you expect this? Uh, would you say that considering the level of honesty that you have with yourself and commitment to your passion after leaving your previous career trailing behind, did this like make sense? You know, ever since that happened, the trajectory ever since, did it sort of feel natural? Yeah, I think mean, no. I mean, not that say it's a natural, <laughs> but I never thought basically. I mean, so many occasions, like, wow, I cannot believe this happened. Yeah. But the only thing what does happen is that as you are going through this journey, there's so many moments that it's just, it, beca it becomes so, it's almost like it's so intense that you don't have the time to step out. Like, there's moments, okay, of course, when I'm here by myself, you know, in the studio on the weekend, and then I'm painting, I'm walking around, or if I'm walking in my house, or, you know, there's moments when I'm traveling, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe that this yeah. is happening. I cannot believe that this is happening, that I'm here. Yeah. I cannot believe that I'm doing this. I cannot believe I'm with this person. And there's moments like this, but, but then again, there's so, the, the speed of so many things happen all at the same time, yeah. that you end up not being able to leave everything is such a state of wonder. Do you know what I mean? Like people yeah, feel like, oh my God, here I am. You go to a party that you're just thinking about, you don't have nothing in your head and you just like enjoy the whole thing. Do you know what I mean? Because now you're like, everything is behind you. But as you are, if you organize the party, if you're getting married, if it's your birthday party and you're really involved, making sure that everything's taken care, you freaking don't enjoy it. Yeah. Because, you know what I mean, I mean, I'm not saying that I don't enjoy this, but I have to really step back and really appreciate Like when I walk into this room here, I say, oh my God, there's a beautiful room, this beautiful table, the rug, all this, everything that took so much time and well, it's detail. Fire. But you know what I'm saying? But uh, I mean, I myself, I mean, I, I, you know, I never thought about that my art would take me that far. You know, it's just, even for myself, it's a big surprise. And so that, that feeling but, that you were describing, you were describing it as a feeling of wonder. Right. So when you step out, there's all these steps, there's all the success, so much happening. But then every once in a while, you sort of step away from it. You go, wow. Yeah. And there's it's, the wonder is the best way that you would put it. Yeah. Feeling of the wonder. wonder. Yes. I like that a lot. And what kind of relationship do you think that we need to have with ourselves and our passions to make the necessary shift in our lives to allow us to do what we love and to reach that place of wonder? Like, what do you think it takes? Like, if you had to sort of take, I know that a lot about you is just, it just makes sense to you and it comes from a place very, very, very deep down, but what do you think you can maybe um, share with people about what they can do to experience this kind of wonder? I think, I think number one, I think it's, uh, it's for you to really find what you love doing it. And it could be the most simple thing. You know, and that once you find that, that what you love doing it, and then you need to go for it, you know, and just don't, you know, don't be scared. Because I think the other problem is that a lot of time, and, and I've seen this, like people, you know, um, they end up, 
you know, they may love doing, let's say, cooking, but, you know, they don't believe cooking can make money because they think the money is the number one, mm -hmm. and then they go for the money. There's nothing wrong to make money, but I do think it's not more fun making money with something that you love. Yeah. Because I can guarantee you all those people from, let's say, if you're going to go to see why so many people, of course, they're in the middle of all the, those people, like people that go to the, let's say, career as a police, you know, and um, there must be somewhere, some of those people, one of the drive is because they like the idea of being in charge, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And if you see people that are going to restaurant business, they love the idea of being around people and serving people. If you're gonna go to see the guy that start, you know, the Cipriani, Joseph Cipriani, the old man, he's there. If you're gonna go to Harris Bond, Venice, he's there, he come to the table and say hello to you. And he invented like those, you know, those drink, you know, the Bellini, blah, 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 all this thing. But he likes serving. Some people like serving. Some people like being charged. Some people like to be, you know, like be a lawyer, you know, like being a trial lawyer, make a show. Some people like to be an actor. And then we go to direction to places that make us feel comfortable and feel like in this beautiful state of mind, you know. And I think once you find that, the money would come, mm -hmm. you know, of course, a lot, the, difficult, the biggest challenge of today's world is that the pressure and the anxiety that the success of other people can put in other ones. Mm -hmm. Let's say when somebody see themselves, I say, oh my God, I see Jeff Bezos, he was like a nobody here in Miami, he was an adopted guy, and now he's the richest person in the world. I need to be richest. You know, every one of us have a different kind of a journey, and I think we need just to embrace that because we can be happy and successful at the same time. But the money is not, you know, I, I don't think the money is the answer for happiness. Do you know what I mean? So I think the number one is for someone to identify what makes them happy. But then there's so many other issues, you know, like the pressure of the family, the pressure of the friend, the, you know, the world, you know, like, oh my God, this guy was going to Harvard and then why he quit his job to start like a company he doesn't even know what he's gonna do. And then, you know, but that, guess what? People support that. And Mark Zuckerberg, here he is. Yeah. You know, people thought like he was crazy. Yeah. He just dropped out, you know? But some people can do that. But the idea is that go for what you love. And then you're gonna find, you know, um, you're gonna find something. You know, it's, uh, to sort of bring this like full circle, the, the man who introduced us, my attorney Ken, he actually, he's a lawyer, right? Yeah. He's a great lawyer. Takes a lot of pride in practicing law. But I think that his true calling is writing and his ability to communicate and tell stories. And so going back to what you said about, you know, police officers, like right. people end up doing that because in a way it's more traditional route, but they don't want to be in charge, you know, and when people have good values and good intentions, there's many roles that they can fulfill. Yes. But then the next step is the next evolution of that is going, okay, what am I really passionate about? What's my true calling? And how can I put this in, a, in somewhere where mm -hmm. maybe I can share, inspire, be passionate? So I think it's just very interesting how yeah. the person that introduced us. Yeah, is. no, I mean, listen, I, I think, and as you say, that reminds me about one thing is that we have so many dimensions and we go through life with so many stages of our life. You know, if you can see like someone like Schwarzenegger, you now he really wanted to change his life and the way it was bodybuilding. But then he become an actor and then he become a governor. I mean, he goes through, you know, evolution, you know, because we go through evolution. But the thing that the, the challenge is because the, the expectation that we have for ourselves and our families and our society that when, you know, all of us, we go, when you're a teenager, what are you going to do for the rest of your life? Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm going to be a doctor. Oh, I'm going to be whatever, you know, and then, and you had to really go for that. Yeah. Because now, if I don't go all the way, I'm a failure. But then you can change your life. And when you turn 50, oh, what do you want to do? I want to have three children. I want to have, have a very nice life and blah, blah, blah. But when you go and become 40, 50, say, God, I mean, what I've done, it was not really what I wanted. I did not want to have all this thing. I don't care. Do you know me? Or some people say, you know, like, oh, my God. Like my mother had a friend that she never wanted to have children. And she had abortion, many of those. And she was so miserable after all the abortion that she had. My mother had 12 children. And, uh, but some 12, people go through life, 12, 12 only nine survive. And uh, which is 
incredible. You know, I myself, I don't suggest nobody to have 12 kids, but <laughs> it's like a huge responsibility because, you know, I mean, I do think it's a very big responsibility. To have one kid is a big responsibility, imagine to have 12. But, you know, I do think that, you know, you know, I, I, I think the perception, not the perception, but the, the pressure that we all have, you know, from family, from our group of society, from the world, you know, that we have to figure out things sooner in our life when sometimes things come later on. But I, I think it is a very big gift for whoever find, you know, that call and for whoever are able to have few dimensions or several dimensions like Churchill, he was a politician, he painted as well. He was a great human being and blah, 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 all this whole thing. You know, and, and, uh, but it comes also with the education because then you're gonna be able to really think, reflect, and think where you are, what you're doing, and then you go for it. But then again, you know, you cannot do things by yourself. I mean, I think about me myself. I could never do all this stuff that I've done if, if I didn't have the help of so many people today and in the past that came in my life, you know. That somehow, in that moment, they were helpful to me. And, uh, and then, you know, things change, you know, and then, you know, keep it, you know, with inspiration, or they did something, and, yeah. That is, that is, um, this is a, a, a train. It's not an oh, earthquake. <laughs> it feels, you can feel it. You know, I know, we, that's why we have the map of the palace. I don't know if you saw, there's a, tr a train tracks. <laughs> what, do you, what do you do when you're painting and there's this kind of vibration? Does it? Does I, I make it like, you know, I haven't seen the LA story, a movie. It's a movie dude, that you gotta watch because it's LA a story. movie. It's called LA Story and the earthquake, the thing is this movie, and people are talking like nothing happened. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's very funny. LA Story I watched many years ago. You know, I wanted to sort of note how some it's like going and taking the more traditional route to a career, right? It's like a traditional route is like it seems like the safest bet, but then it can create a whole lifestyle, a whole life of uh, of resentment, yeah, it's, it's something that I believe you're trying to express. And do you have any suggestions for people, younger people? I know that you said education, huge education, yeah. is huge. But actually, something to sort of forward, like I, I had another question for you actually, and it was about reading and and right. material that's worked for you and, and helped you and guided you. But if you could go back, let's say to the moment where you were making that shift, when you were going, okay, I'm gonna be an artist. Are there any materials back then, or maybe in hindsight, materials that you think could have helped you then that you can recommend to other people to help them get on this track? Well, I had to say this, and uh, listen, anybody going to the arts, I think it would be so helpful to go to business, business school. At the same time, going to art going school. Like if you can, artists for artists. I mean, I think you know, business it can be applied to anything. You know, even if you to have, let's say, if I would be like, uh, if I would marry somebody like super wealthy, and I would take care of the house, I should know a little bit about business because it's a business running a house. Yeah. I mean, think about it. somebody come to do your garden, and then they see your house, and then you have to be dealing with the pool man, the grass cutter. You know, somebody you have to do a refurbishing in the house, and you have to deal this back and forth. You know, like prices, who give you a better price? It's just like it's a. It's like an ongoing, you know, it's like exhausting, you know, just to be dealing with that. So it's an everyday thing. So if you go to any sort of, of, of things, I think knowing a little bit about business is super important. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of people are turned off by business because maybe from a superficial level, they see it as like a profit, like some kind of system generating profit. I see it as a system that generates efficiency and it's applicable in so many different yeah. levels. I, I, I see it as well. I think the idea of doing the, the not that I would take, you know, like when you know about how to at least protect yourself. Like if you're in the position of somebody's coming as a vendor to you, like, oh, I'm gonna do, take care of the electrical thing in your house. I'm gonna cut the grass, I'm gonna cut the tree. Because all this thing, I'm, you, know, you know, let's say if you stay at home, like if I'm Romero and I'm like taking care of the house. And uh, so, you, so as an artist as well, because you know, you have to be dealing with, you know, there's art and then there's business. Mm -hmm. There's art, you know, the business of art. And uh, so I would suggest to anybody, if you want to be an artist, you know, just, you cannot just like forget about, oh my God, I'm gonna be an artist in here and there you go, you know, yes. you know and then, then, then what's gonna happen? Because there's a, you finish a piece of art and then you gotta have to be, be dealing with the world of 
business, you know, the world of structure, you know, everything else that comes along. So I would definitely would suggest that. I think, you know, um, you know, but then again, we all have different stories and we all had, have different situations. And it's not a cook cutter, you know. Yeah. But I do think that it would be very helpful because if I, if I had that, I'd probably be even more successful. Really? Yes. That's unbelievable. I mean, just to hear because, you say that, it's... it's... No, because you know what? So many decisions I did because, of, because I, I'm in love with what I do. It was never about the money. Do you know what I mean? I never, you know, if there was once an opportunity for me that somebody said, listen, I, gonna, I have a place, somebody that owns a gallery, right? And told me, oh, I'm going to close that space in there. But if you want, you can stay there until is, the list is over. But if I was another person, like other people that I've seen in the, through my life, I would say, how much are you going to pay me? Yeah. I never asked that. Yeah. Do you know what I say? I'm going to go there. Yeah. I didn't ask one cent of anything. And guess what? If I did not say that day, I wouldn't be standing in this room, probably. I wouldn't go get the ad for Absolute Vodka. Because what does happen, a lot of times, people are thinking about the money first. You need to make people need you and think about you in a really special way. Oh my God, every time I'm gonna think about, oh, um, I'm gonna think about uh, like Jenny, because Jenny is always there for me. Oh, well, why? I mean, but if you have somebody, every time you call, the person's not there, and the first thing they don't wanna talk is about the money. And it was like, of course, you know, money is Pay important. Dependable. Pay dependable and make sure that you dare when people need you and you can deliver too. Because the other thing, that's what it is. You know, because if you can't deliver and you cannot be there, you're not available, you're always unavailable, there's always a problem, and then you go. And then you say, why I'm not successful? Because you just, you don't have what it takes. And when, uh, as an artist, when was it that you just discovered this appreciation for business? Was it always there? Like, did you know going into art, like, this is gonna be a business? I mean, well, obviously I mean, there's a lot of passion I just, passion. I always want to do my best. You know, like, if I was gonna frame my work, I want to put a beautiful frame in my work. Mm -hmm. I want to do like something special. I always try to outdo what I was doing to do nice. Do you know what I mean? Instead to go like half job, I would do it nice. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If I'm gonna be committed to something, I would commit for that. You know, I, like so many times I, I, uh, I say no to things because I was doing my work. Mm -hmm. You know, if I was my birthday party, I don't care if it's my birthday party, I'm gonna be in a plane flying to Europe mm -hmm. and I'll be by myself in the plane, there you go. Celebrate by myself, mm -hmm. there you go. If there was friends of mine going to a party, I was doing my work. Mm -hmm. You know, I was taking care of responsibility that I had, you know, and there is so many things that, I actually, I used to tell people like the follow, if you want to be successful, you really need to give it all. Because if you don't, time goes by so fast and there you go. Then it doesn't, you know, and then time is like every day, every day, every day, every day. But that, that's the drive of someone, you know what I mean? Some people want, and then again, the most important thing is for you to be happy. And if you find that comfort zone to be happy where you are, you know, going to the beach or, you know, hanging out with your friends, you know, instead for you to go and meet somebody that can help in your career, you're gonna say, no, I mean, I, I'm sorry, but I have commitment with my friends. I'm really sorry, but something else come out. I can't do it, there you go. Sorry, I mean, how many times? And I was very lucky because I was married to someone that was very supportive to me. And she understood that, you know, my art came, like, it was really, it is important and was before very important. And that's why we could live such a, a good, in a way, good life that she didn't have to be worried about anything, that she could take out my son or her son and everything, which is very important too, you know, support that you, be, someone can have from your family because it can be really difficult if somebody worked the whole day and you get at home and you have, instead to be love, you feel resentment. Right. Do you know what I mean? And then it makes someone very unhappy and you don't understand what's going on because, oh my God, I'm doing all these and, uh, and I'm happy going there, but then again, I come home and my family is unhappy. You know what I mean? Or, you know, and there you go. The, the support is not in there, and that's really difficult. And, you know, that's why you see a lot of people, you know, so successful, you know, like, you know, breaking families and situations because it just doesn't work out that way because the drive, you know, is not, you know, it doesn't, you know, like, it exists in the family, it's not working. 
and I think it's really complicated. So anyway, I'm done. I'm going to. No, no, I mean, I, I appreciate you going down that rabbit hole because but basically, I, I wanted yeah. to ask you about the sacrifices that, it, that and what it takes. It's a lot of sacrifice. That's yeah. the word, sacrifices. Yeah. Because a lot of time people doesn't, and the other problem, they, they, they don't want to sacrifice to get something spectacular. And things doesn't come that fast. I think the biggest problem that we have right now is technology showing to us things that happen so fast, but there's certain things that really take its course. It's like a little bit like Warren Buffett said, you cannot, you cannot make a baby in a month, mm -hmm. even if you make pregnant, you know, 12 or nine women, yeah. you know, you can't. Yeah. It has to take its course. There's certain things that really take its course to become something spectacular. And yeah. I think going back to, to you, we're mentioning how you know you have these moments of wonder, and that's within all the moments of like things are moving quickly, things are moving quickly. But if it weren't for that time that it takes to really do something great, the moments of wonder wouldn't exist. Yeah, that's true. I wanted to ask you about your lifestyle and uh, the kind of role. Just to kind of change the pace, uh, what kind of role do you believe your lifestyle plays in the quality and in the nature of your work? And just your health overall, what kind of role do you think it plays in your art? My lifestyle. Your health, your, what you eat, your me yeah. meditation perhaps. You know. Well, I think, you know, in the past I thought I did not make meditation, but somebody told me that I do make meditation when I'm doing my work because I'm thinking. I'm, You're in a flow. Yeah, I, there was a point, there was moments that I even stopped breathing. And I one day I said, oh my God, I'm not breathing as I'm doing certain things in my work because like for instance, when I was doing polka dots, you know, like those polka dots, not this one here, but from that painting there, there was a time that I did each one polka dot one by one with a brush. So I wanted to make sure that my work was almost not human possible to somebody to do it because it's so perfect. I want to look like a computer that did it, that I didn't touch it, you know what I mean? That's the idea. And today I do want to have the opposite. I want people to understand that I touch the piece. Yeah. <laughs> but there was a moment that was wow. like, I was like, oh my God. It gets to the extreme yeah. where people go, there's no yeah. way that he actually did this. Yeah, so I was like, oh, to... so perfect. One death at a time. And I wanted to produce more and then it was even more stressful because I wanted to create more art because I know the time is going so fast and there's only so much, listen, when an artist die, you know, like the difference about my work is because I've done so much stuff and I don't just do paintings, you know, I mean, other things can be done, you know, when like I'm dead, right? But, you know, the factory closes, basically. I mean, of original paintings, it's done. Do you know what I mean, Jenny? But, you know, in my case, other things can be done because I've done so many images that I can, you know, um, that a, a team of people can, you know, move on and do things, you know, like, you know, the designers, you know, let's say Emiliano Pucci or, you know, or designers out there because I, images can be done and, and my art can be product and so many things. Not too many other artists out there create images that can apply to so many things as I've done. That's incredible that you, are able to express like the degree of flow that you had actually made it seem as if you hadn't touched the art. That is, well, I just I mean, think that it says so many things on so many different levels and... Um, yeah, I mean, that's what I thought at that point, you know, that I wanted to look so beautiful. And, and in, in, in retrospect, I can think about back, you know, growing up that, you know, I, my, my whole world as a child and growing up as a teenager, it was so chaotic. And I wanted, I think my work, you know, the way I was doing it, I was almost like creating a world with harmony where everything had its place, you know, and it was beautiful and it was clean and it's perfect. You know, I wanted perfection in my life. And the only place I could get was through my art, you know, and, uh, and I, the only place I could have sort of control, which I, it's not like I want total control about things, but as you know, as you uh, as as a kid, you know, as a, you know, you want you know, I strive for that, and that's why I changed my life. Because some people they really don't care how they live; they just go like whatever, you know. And I wanted more. I wanted something else, you know. I mean, you're able to make that shift in your life and doing something that maybe had some degree of safety and you know was traditional, and then you went and did something completely different to the degree where it was so perfect and you were in such a deep flow that you forgot to breathe and it made it seem as if it was made by a machine. 
Yeah. To make a long story short, yeah. that is today we do have a machine in here that we're gonna be able to see. They, they, this machines is in a place called Magic. It's a magical room. You're gonna see upstairs. Well, you know, actually, when I walked into the palace and I saw in the in the entrance, you have this big map, and yeah. there was a room that says it's it's called the um, the room of ideas, and is it yeah yeah the, the lab of ideas, and so what happens in the lab of ideas? Well, I mean, what does happen is that ideas happen anywhere. I mean, I can be like having dinner with friends, I can be out, I can be driving, I can be like watching TV, taking a shower, ideas can happen anywhere. But it's a place where we can discuss and we can develop that. So we do have a place over here that we can put all that in one place, you know. Otherwise, it's going to be like tons of ideas. And so how do you record the ideas when they come up in the shower or when you're driving? Uh, I mean, oh, it, can, it can be like uh, we have actually uh, like a, a chat you know, like a WhatsApp like chat about ideas. Wow. You know, we have immediately we put in there, like we have an idea, put in there. I'm driving, have an idea, do a picture, something like, and there you go. Because before I have moments I was driving and I run to the studio and I have immediately to go and do it, right? But there's so, I cannot, I mean, sometimes I can do something like that, but I can't do all the time because I have also things that I started yesterday. My, my work, certain things I can do right on the spot. But there's certain thing that takes months, takes weeks, like years, you know what I mean? For me, I finished one painting once, took me eight years, basically. Wow. Because of so many other commitment that I have, like this morning I was doing a video for this guy from Mongolia. I mean, every day is not only painting, meeting with my staff, it's just like, just a lot, right, Jenny? She's here, she, she see all that. So Romero, I, I know that you're busy and I hate to cut our time, but I just want to, you know, if you had to, if we had to leave us on a final note, um, let's say that the, the, the people that I would like to, to really listen to this and to tune in are people that maybe they lack either the passion or they lack the curiosity to discover that passion or they lack the courage, maybe they have the passion, they lack the courage. What would you say to these people? What kind of, on what note would you leave this? Well, I definitely, I, I think, you know, when you find that you have your passion, you definitely have to work on, be patient, and, and be, you know, consistent, and I think it's super important, patient and consistent, you know, if you do that, you know, wake up every day in the morning and just believe in, in what you're doing, and uh, number one, you got to believe first, because if you expect other people to believe in you and then give a stamp, oh, you're great, no, I mean, people's gonna tell you that you're not great, you're terrible, you know, but you have to believe in what you're doing. Actually, there is a video, a little quick a story about uh, Stanley Lee, you know, I, I saw not too long ago that he was in- um, Stanley, the- Stanley, yeah, uh, from the, you know, he did all Marvel. this superhero Marvel. And he, he said that he had an idea one day that would, to create a superhero, and he was like, but he was thought, well, it should be a, like a fly, and then he saw, oh, maybe a Spider-Man. And he came to his agent and told, oh, I have this great idea. What it is, I want to create a new superhero. What is that? It should be a young guy, and he should be a spider. And say, what? The manager told him, are you crazy? People hate spiders. They despair. You just, are you, you out of your mind. Oh my God. And then he had a magazine. The magazine was like going down. And the last issue, he said, I'm going to do this. What the hell? He did this. You saw this thing, you know. No, no, I'm gonna send it to you. I sent it to Lucas the other day. So, um, so he's, he basically put in the magazine and when people saw that, they went crazy. And then the manager said, do you know, what about that idea that we had the other day? It was fantastic, let's work on that. The manager, his book manager, like whatever, his agent, I'm gonna send that to you. So I do think it's a follow. If you believe in you, what you're doing, you have to go all the way until you see it not happening, but you cannot just give up. And a lot of people give up very quickly. And, uh, and I think it's much easier, you know, for somebody, you know, to find the easy way than they, they go to, you know, I'm going to now use this line of Jeff, Jeff Bezos. to say, it's much easier to find a comfortable life and live a comfortable life without no efforts. But if you want to have a life of service, and, um, and later on, service, and you, know, and you find a passion in doing something special. And later on, you're gonna, what, what are you gonna be proud of? You'll be like, when you're 90 or 80 or whatever, you're gonna say, like, I have a life, life full of service, I do so many things for my community, for the country, I change people's lives, and I also have so many beautiful adventures that I remember doing in my work as I was going through life. 
And you feel like proud of it, but you say, oh my God, what I've done, what I've done. And then I think that's one question that people need to ask about to themselves, but that, that you need to have courage, which is really, you know, um, you know which is really a, a special quality of someone, but it's also the other aspect is, is the surrounding of someone, you know, because a lot of time people can be so around. You can have so many ideas, but if people tell you all the time, if you're not strong enough, that you not, oh, this is such a stupid, I'm not going to listen to this. Or, you know, like it can be in the family, it could be friends. A lot of times friends don't believe in their friends. Not, the closer they are, the less they believe in the person. So you end up having other people to believe in you from far away because they're like, oh my God, they're, they're just like, whatever. You know, but you have to have a sense of belief and then you go, which is, you know, just, that's why I had to say this. Family plan is so important because people will understand what it means to be a parent. You know, to means to be a father, mother, you know, you know, be a brother, like a neighbor, things like that. Because we don't know, I mean, the, what it is, what it is to be, you know. And then sometimes people say things like, oh my God, I can't wait for my child to get out of the house. Jesus Christ, you have your, this kid and now you're like, I can't wait them to be out of the house. Yes, we do want them to be prepared to live a life of a human being and of a citizen, but you don't want to feel that person unwanted. Do you know what I mean? Like, no, you stay until you know, you're ready to go. You go to college, you know, now you're ready to go because some people are ready you know, when they're 10, but some people are like 20, 30, they're still not ready to face the world. And then they go out there, like you have here in the University of Miami, a few years ago, a kid came from another place and got killed in here because wasn't prepared to be by themselves and just something crazy happened. And they would say, wow, you know, don't know the story, you know? But so many things happen. And I think it go back to family. Family planning is a big one. Well, and you know, I think, uh, I heard this somewhere recently, it's actually a conversation between a famous neurologist and, and a big public figure that I look up to. And uh, the conversation to me that he was saying was that sometimes the people that are closest to you, they don't believe in you in a sense. And it's like a very retracted, like it's like a very, almost like a very subconscious, like I don't, not that they don't believe, but they don't want you to change because they like you for the way you are and then any kind of change, even if it's a positive change, even if it's good for you, it means that you're gonna be different. And they're afraid of that. They wanna protect the image that they yeah. have. And so it's like a bad kind of love almost. Yeah, so it's me I heard recently that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, can, it can be that too. And it's, it could, it's true because, you know, yeah, it can be that, you know. And, but then again, if somebody would know that, they would say, oh my God, I mean, I want to, like one day when my son came from, you know, from somewhere, and he told me, I bought a motorcycle. And I was like, first I was like, oh my God, Brandon, what you've done, you got a motorcycle. But then I, again, I was like, Brandon, you need to get somebody to teach you how to ride this motorcycle. <laughs> because when he got the car, I got the police to teach him, a say, and he went to get class, he got the whole thing. And then I thought to myself, I cannot impose him something because Brandon is a grown up person. Yeah. I mean, I want also him to be able to make those kind of decisions you know, on his own, but know that the risk is something happened to you can die. Just know that, right? Okay, okay, but you need to go and, so you're now ready to go and do that? Okay, go ahead. You know, but I also, if he told me I want to go to the moon, I was like, I need to support you yeah. because you need to be happy. And one day he told me I need to, to I'm thinking about getting rid of the motorcycle. It's like, fantastic, Brandon. <laughs> I'll anyway, support you with that too. <laughs> yeah, support with that. Anyway, great to uh, talk to you guys. Yeah, thank and you so much No, no, my pleasure. What, what a pleasure. No, really, it's great. I'm glad so that it worked much. out and we did a lot of the changing, but you know, it was just unfortunate. Sorry about that, but. No, no problem. Thank you so much for your no, time. No, my pleasure. Uh, That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, it was a great conversation, right?